Hi, here we are given, uh, given above or below pretty much here is the schematic map of the metro lines in a city with rectangles denoting terminal stations example A. So we have A, C, D, B, M, P, Q, N. These are the eight terminal stations. Okay, so terminal stations are basically those stations where uh, a metro train will start or finally stop at. Okay. Now diamond denoting junction stations R, T, V, S. These are the diamond uh, uh, shaped stations and these are denoting junction stations and the small filled up circles denoting other stations. So all these black dots here are other stations. Now each train runs either in east west or north south direction. So either it is east west. So these are two routes MN and PQ or north south is one is AB and the other is CD. So these are the four routes that we have two north uh, two are east west and two are north south. Okay. But not both. So a train runs only in east west direction or only in north west uh, north south direction not in both. Fine. So this means that a train starting from A can only go to B or starting from B can only go to A. It cannot go to any other terminal station. Similarly, a train starting from M will go to N or a train starting from N will go to M only and not any other uh, uh, stations. Okay. Next is all trains stop for two minutes at each of the junction stations. Junction stations are R, S, V, T. So trains will stop at two minutes once they reach this junction stations and for one minute at each of the other stations. So all these black circles, the trains will stop at these black circles for exactly one minute. It takes two minutes to reach the next station for trains going in east west direction. So trains going in east west direction. So for example, a train which is at this uh, junction or at this station to go from here to here, it takes two minutes to go from here to here two minutes so on to go from here to here two minutes to go from here to here two minutes and so on so in the east west direction it takes two minutes uh, and it takes three minutes to go from north south direction between any two stations so to go from this station till v it will take three minutes in the north south direction to go from v till next station it will take another three minutes three minutes three minutes and so on okay Next is, for each terminal station, the first train starts at 6 a.m. The last train leaves the terminal stations at mid midnight. So a train starting at from B, the first train starting from B will be at 6 a.m. And the last will be at 12 midnight. And same is the case for all these terminal stations, A, B, C, D, P, Q, M and N. Fine. Now, <coughs> otherwise, during the service hours, there are metro service every 15 minutes in the north-south direction and every 10 minutes in the east-west direction. So in the north-south direction, let's talk about terminal B, the first train starts at 6 a.m. towards A. And in the north-south direction, there is a train every 15 minutes. So the other train, next station, a train starting from B will be at 6.15 a.m. A train after this will be again 15 minutes after 6.15 at 6.30 a.m. Next train starting from B will be at 6.45 and then 7, then 7.15 and so on. Similarly, in the east-west direction, a train is at every 10 minutes. So if the first train starts from M at 6 a.m., the next will start at 6.10 a.m., then 6.20 a.m. and so on. Okay. Okay, a train must rest for at least 15 minutes after completing a trip at the terminal station before it can undertake the next trip in the reverse direction. So for example, a train starting from M will reach N at certain point of time, right? Once it reach, reaches N, this same train can again go back to M but only after resting for 15 minutes, right? So when it is required, we'll consider this uh, information. We'll see to it. Uh, we'll come back to it again later when it is required. Fine. All questions are related to this metro service only. Assume that if someone reaches a station exactly at the time a train is supposed to leave, he or she can catch the train. Fine. So if let's say some a train is uh, going to start from C at 6 a.m. 
and a person reaches C at 6 a.m. So this person can catch this train. That's what it is given in the last point. Okay. Chalo. So here we have to solve all the five questions separately. So let's start with the questions one by one. First question here is, if Hari is ready to board a train at 8, 5 a.m. from station M. So Hari here reaches station M at 8, 5 a.m. Then when is the earliest that he can reach N? So we have to figure out how long will it take for Hari to reach N. Okay, fine. So let's first of all see which is the train that Hari can catch. Uh, we know the first train from M is at 6 a.m. and the train is at after every 15 minutes in the, oh sorry, after every 10 minutes in the east-west direction. So after every 10 minutes will be, uh, after 6 a.m. the next train will be 6.10, then 6.20, 6.30, 6.40, 6.50 and so on. Till a train will leave station M at 8 a.m. and after 8 a.m. the next train will be at 8.10 a.m. So hurry. Since he reaches at 8, 5 a.m., Hari will not be able to catch this train. Hari will be able to catch this train. So Hari's journey will start at 8, 10 a.m. and not at 8, 5 a.m. So starting at 8, 10 a.m., what is the total time that Hari will take to travel from M to N? Now the total travel time, the total time taken, sorry, the total time taken is, first of all, the travel traveling time plus the stoppages time. A metro going from M to N travels for some time and it also stops at each of these stations, right? So let's first calculate what is the travel time total. Now to go from any station to adjacent station in the east-west direction, it takes two minutes. So how many journeys it has to cover? M to the circle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 into 2. So the total traveling time is 20 into 2, 40 minutes. Okay. Plus there will be a stoppage time. Now stoppage time will be either at these circular, circular stations or either at these diamond junctions. Okay. So let's count these circle stations. 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So each of these 17 stations, the train will stop for 1 minute. So total stoppage time is 17 minutes. And then you have two junctions. And at each of these two junctions, the train will travel, uh, stop for 2 minutes each. So total stoppage time will be 4 minutes. So the total time taken is stoppage time of 4 plus 17, 21 and the traveling time of 40. 40 plus 21 is 61 minutes. So the total traveling time or total time taken to go from M to N is 61 minutes. Okay. So after 8, 10 a.m. 61 minutes is 1 hour plus 1 minute. So 1 hour after 8, 10 is 9, 10 a.m. plus 1 minute is 9, 11 a.m. So the correct answer to this question is option D, 9, 11 a.m. Hari will reach station N at 9.11 a.m. Okay. Let's look at the next question. In this question, it is given that if Priya is ready to board a train at 10.25 a.m. from station T. Okay. So, sorry. Priya reaches station T at 10.25 a.m. And we have to figure out what is the earliest that she can reach station S. So she has to reach S. So to go from T to S, either Priya can take this route T R S or Priya can take this route T V S. Okay. So let's first consider the T R S route. Now if her, she has to take the T R S route, that means first she will have to take a train coming from B she the train she will board at t go to r and then from r she will have to take a train coming from m and board that train at r and go to s fine so let's look at a train coming from b to t which is the earliest train she can board if she reaches p or uh, the station t at 1025 
So the first train leaving B is at 6 a.m. going towards T. So time taken to go from B to T, what is it? Uh, in the north-south direction, travel time is 3 minutes. So 3 minutes travel time here, 3 minutes here, 3 minutes here. 1 minute stoppage time, 1 minute stoppage time and a 2 minute stoppage time over here. So 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So after 6 a.m., the first train that will leave T will be at 6.13. I am taking the uh, stoppage time of 2 minutes here. Although the train coming from B will reach T at 6.11, but it will stop for 2 minutes and then start from T. So this 6.13 is the time the first train will leave T towards R. Okay. This is the first train that will leave T towards R. And we know in the north-south direction, a train leaves every 15 minutes. So after 6.13, the next train will leave 15 minutes after this. So that will be 6.28. Then again 13 minutes after this. Uh, so that will be 6.28 plus 15. 6.43 and so on. So there will be a train leaving T at 10.13. Right? And after that, there will be a train leaving at 10.28. So 10.13 train, Priya will not be able to catch, but Priya can catch the train leaving at 10.20 a.m. Right? So Priya can start latest by 10.28 from here. And from 10.28, she will reach R by what time? Let's figure that out. So the traveling time here will be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 minutes and the stoppage time is 1, 1, 1. So 3, 4 are 12, 13, 14, 15. So after 10, 28, it will take Priya 15 minutes to reach R. So Priya reaches R at 10, 28 plus 15 is 10, 43 a.m. So Priya reaches R at 10, 43 a.m. So the earliest train Priya can take is the train which leaves R at 10.43 towards S. Okay. So let's look at train starting from M start at 6 a.m. And what is the time they, that they can reach R? So we know in the east-west direction the traveling time is 2 minutes. And the stoppage time here is 1.1.1 1, 1, 1 and 2 minutes here. So the latest train which will leave R will be at what time we are trying to figure that out so a train coming from m to r will leave r at what time 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 this is 5 times 10 11 12 or sorry rather first of all traveling time is 2 4 is 8 then 9 10 11 12 13 okay so a train starting from m at 6 am will leave r latest by 6 13 if we don't consider this waiting time at R, the train here will reach at 6, 6.11. The train will reach at 6.11, but it will stop for 2 minutes here and leave at 6.13. So the first train that will leave is at 6.13. Okay. If this is the first train leaving at 6.13, the next train will be after 10 minutes in the east-west direction. So next train will be at 6.23, then 6.33, then 6.43, so on. So there will be a train leaving at 10.33 and then there will be a train leaving at 10.43. So as soon as Priya reaches R, there will be a train which is going to leave at 10.43. So she will immediately board this train, right? And as soon as she boards this train, she will immediately leave for S, okay? So now to go from R to S, what will be the time taken? Time taken will be 2 plus 2 plus 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, this is the traveling time. And then waiting time is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 into 2, 20 minutes of traveling time plus stoppage time of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 20 plus 9 is 29. So a traveling time of 20, total time to go from R to S is 29 minutes, right? So after 10.43, it will take her 29 minutes. So 29 minutes after this will be 11.12. So she reaches here at 11.12 a.m. So if Priya starts from T, goes to R and then reaches S, she will reach S at 11.12 a.m. 
So again, repeating what we did here is, if Priya is going to take this route TRS, we first calculated which is the latest train she can board. So a train which starts from B will reach T by 11.26 am. It will stop for 2 minutes and then start from T at 10.28. So the latest train Priya can board is a train which leaves T at 10.28. It takes 15 minutes to reach R. So Priya reaches R at exactly 10.43. Now a train starting from M will reach the first train will reach R at 11, 6, 11 a.m. But it will be waiting for two minutes. So it will leave R at 6, 13 a.m. The first train leaving R is at 6, 13 a.m. And there is a train leaving R every 10 minutes, right? So the train, uh, that latest train that Priya can board would be the train leaving at 10, 43, right? So the first train Priya, first train leaving R is at 6.13 and there will be a train leaving every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, 6.13, 6.23, 33, 43, 53, then 7.3, then 7.13. So 6.13 is possible, 7.13, then 8.13, 9.13, 10.13. After 10.13, there will be 10.23, 10.33 and then 10.43. So there will be a train leaving at 10.33 which Priya obviously cannot board she, because she reaches at 10.43 but she can board a train leaving at 10.43 okay and after that Priya uh, this train will take exactly 29 minutes to reach S. Now I'm not considering the waiting time here for S because Priya just have to reach here she does not have to board this train to go anywhere else. So she reaches S at uh, after 29 minutes so 10 43 plus 29 minutes is 11 12 a.m. okay cool now considering the other case that Priya goes from T to V and then to S okay so if Priya reaches T at 10 uh, Priya reaches T at 10 25 a.m. so a train starting from P at 6 a.m. will reach at 6 11 a.m. we calculated this for m and r right so same is the going to be the case for p to t and this 6 11 a.m. reaching train will depart t at 6 13 a.m. right so the first train that will depart t towards v is at 6 13 a.m. and a train will leave after every 15 minutes right so 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 so on if you keep doing it so there will be a train leaving t at 10 13 a.m. And 15 minutes after this will be, sorry, not 15 minutes, there's the train leaves after every 10 minutes, right? Sorry, 10 minutes, sorry. So the first train leaving is 10 at 6.15. Then if you keep calculating, there will be a train leaving at 10.13. Now Priya cannot board this train. So the train leaving uh, after another 10 minutes is at 10.23. Priya again cannot board this train. And the next train leaving will be at 10.30. So the latest train that Priya can board is at 10.33, fine. If this is the latest train that Priya can board, in the other case the latest train Priya could board was at 10.28 but here it is at 10.33. So in this case Priya is already starting late, okay. In the second case when we are going from T to V to S, Priya is already starting late and also consider one thing. When Priya was taking this route, she did not have to wait at R to change the trains. She reached at R at exactly 10.43 and she found a train to go from R to S at 10.43 itself. So there was no waiting time at R, right? Even if you consider that there is no waiting time at V and understand one thing, the total traveling time and the total stoppage time at these stations is going to be the same. The total traveling time from T to R is going to be the same for V to S and the time taken from to go from R to S is going to be same as time taken to go from T to V. Right? If we just consider the time she spends inside the train that is going to be the same to go from T to R as well as to go from T V to uh, S. If that time is same T to R it was 29 minutes sorry it was 15 minutes and R to S is what 29 minutes so same is the going to be the case 
T2V the time is going to be 29 minutes and V2S it's going to be 15 minutes. So the total time at least the minimum time it will take for Priya to go from T to V to S will be 29 plus 15 which is 44. So even if she starts at 10.33 and she takes the least possible time 10, uh, 44 minutes considering that she does not have to wait at V. If she has to wait at V that's a different case but even if she does not have to wait at V she will still take 44 minutes to go from T to V to S and 44 minutes after 10.33 is going to be approximately how much uh, 11.33 plus uh, sorry 11.13 plus 11, 11.24 minutes approximately. Sorry not that 10.33 plus uh, 27 is 11 plus 17 11.17. So if you consider the least time that will be 1117 if she does not have to wait but if she has to wait it will take another some more time basically. But in this case we were, could figure out that Priya reaches at 11:12 am and here the latest she can reach is 11:17 am. So obviously if we have to figure out the latest time she will reach S it can be only option A 11:12 am when she takes this route T to R to S. Okay. Now moving to next question. Here we are given Hari Priya is expected to reach station S late. Station S is here. What is the latest time by which she must be ready to board station S if she must reach station B before 1 am. So she must reach B latest by 1 am or before that. Okay. Before 1 am itself via R. So she has to go from S to R and then from R to B. Okay, fine. So in the previous question, we calculated that just the time taken to go from R to S is 29 minutes. Just so the time taken to go from S to R will also be 29 minutes without including the stoppage time of the train at R. Just the time taken to go from S to R is this. And just the time taken to go from R to B will be how much? Let's see. Uh, north south direction, it takes three minutes just the traveling time. So traveling table will be from R to the station once, twice, thrice, four, five, six, seven. So seven into three, 21 minutes plus the stoppage time of these circular stations will be total five minutes plus the stoppage time at T will be two minutes. So total 28 minutes, right? So if she wants to reach by 1 a.m., she should leave our latest 28 minutes before 1 am. So 28 minutes before 1 am is by 12.32 am. This is the latest she should leave R, right? Now, will she be able to board a train at 12.32 am? Well, let's see. We know the last train leaving A will be at 12 am. The last train leaving will be at 12 a.m. So when will this last train reach R? Let's see. 3, 3, 3, 9 minutes plus 1 plus 1, 11 minutes. So a train leaving at 12 a.m. will reach R at 12, 11 a.m. Right? If it reaches at 12, 11 a.m., it will leave at 12, 13 a.m. after a waiting time of 2 minutes at R. Right? So the latest train that uh, Hari Priya can board is at 12, sorry, it should be 13. 12, 11 plus 2 minutes is 12, 13 a.m. In the night, right? So the latest train she can board is at 12, 13 a.m. and not 12, 32. This was the latest if there was a train available. But the last train available is at 12.13. There is no train available after 12.13. So she will have to board a train at 12.13 and it will take her 20 minutes. So she will reach here by 28 plus 13, 12.41 a.m. She reaches here by 12.41 a.m. But that's not the question. The question is when she sh should she leave S or when should she reach S to board the train? So if at 12, 11, 12, 13 a.m. is the last train that she can catch from R and it takes her 
29 minutes to go from S to R. So the latest she should reach S by will be 12.13 minus 29 minutes. And not just reach S, she should leave S latest by this time 12.13 minus 29. So 12.13 minus 29 minutes is 11.44, right? She should leave S latest by 11.44. If she leaves S after 11.44, she will miss this train and will not be able to reach B before 1 a.m. Then she'll have to wait for the train starting at 6 a.m. in the morning again. So she will not be able to reach on time. So this is the latest train that she should catch. So let's see if there is a train starting at 11.44 or before this. So we know the last uh, uh, a train starts from N at 6 a.m. the first train. And how long does it take to reach S? Let's see. Uh, in the east-west direction, 2 minutes. So 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So 12 minutes of traveling time plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 12 plus 5 17 minutes. So a train starting from 6 a.m. reaches S at 6 17 a.m. and will depart S at 6 19 a.m. So the first train that will depart S towards R is at 6 19 a.m. and in the east-west direction there is a train departing every 10 minutes. So after 6 19, 6 29, 6 39 so on. So there will be a train departing at 11.19 a.m. then 11.29 a.m. in the night. Sorry, p.m. This should be p.m. and not a.m. right? 12, 11 a.m. in the midnight, after midnight. So 29 minutes before this will be 11.44 p.m. and not a.m. Right. So the first train starting at n leaves at 6.19 and a train leaves after every 10 minutes. So that means if you keep adding 10, in the night there will be a train leaving at 11.19 p.m. then at 11.29 p.m. then at 11.39 p.m. and then at 11.49 p.m. Okay. Now the train leaving at 11.49 p.m. if she boards this train she will not be able to reach R at 12.13 a.m. Right? The latest she should start is 11.44 p.m. or before that. So the last train that she can board going from N to R will be at 11.39 p.m. This is the last train that she can board from N to R. So she should reach S by 11.39 and not after that. So latest she, she, she can reach S is 11.39 p.m. Okay. Let's look at the next question. Here we have what is the minimum number of trains that are required to provide the service on the a B line considering both north and the south directions okay so trains going from A to B should also be sufficient and going from B to A should also be sufficient now for this if you look at the directions there was an important point here a train must rest for at least 15 minutes after completing a trip at the terminal station before it can undertake the next trip in the reverse direction so basically what we have is there will be trains going from A to B right there will be trains going from A to B and since we have to figure out the minimum number of trains so we'll have to keep reusing the trains. So what we can do is a train which reaches B will have to wait at B A for 15 minutes and then we can get make this train again start another journey from B to A. Then it will again wait at A for 15 minutes and then start another journey from A to B and so on. Right. So let's figure out what are the minimum number of trains leaving. So let's see what is the first train. The first train starts from A at 6 a.m. And when will it reach B? Let's look at it. So the traveling time in the north-south direction is 3 minutes. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Traveling time is total 10 into 3, 30 minutes. Plus, you have stoppages time 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 minutes of stoppages time at these circular stations. Plus 2, plus 2, 4 minutes of stoppage time at the junctions. So, the total time taken to go from A to B will be 41 minutes. So, the train which leaves at uh, 6 a.m. from A reaches B at 6.41. Right? And the same train will have to wait for 15 minutes. So the latest that this train can start from B towards A will be 15 minutes after this, which is at 6.56 a.m. 
right so this train can start so if this is the first train that it can uh, that can start from b and there will be trains coming every uh, in the north south direction you have uh, 15 minutes so after every 15 minutes there would be a train coming from a and that train will wait for 15 minutes and then again start its journey towards b but before that at 6 am there is also a train that has to depart from b right so at 6 am there has to be a new train to be used from b similarly at 6:15 there has to be a train that has to go from b towards a so this train again cannot come from a in just 15 minutes the train cannot come from a so this has to be a new train to be used at 6:30 am also there has to be a new new train to be used at 6:45 am also there has to be a new train to be used and after that at 7 am do we really need a new train no at 7 am this train is free right this train is ready to start so at 7 am we can make those trains uh, start from b which came from a right so at 7 am this train can start at 7:15 am a train another after 6:41 there will be a train coming from uh, uh, a every 15 minutes so at 6:56 there will be a train coming from uh, b and this train will wait for 15 minutes uh, if it waits for 15 minutes it will wait till 6:11 so at 7:15 at 7:15 this train can leave from b to a at 7 am this particular train can go from b to a and the sequence will keep going on so the only new trains required at b will be these four new trains after that every 15 minutes we can use a train coming from a towards b to go back from b to a so there are four new trains at the starting of the day that are required from b similarly there will be four new trains from a also at 6 am at 6:15 at 6:30 and at 6:45 so from a also there are four trains required new trains and from b also there are four new trains required so the total number of new trains required in on this route a to b is 8 four from a four from b these four trains will go from a to b and again start from b to a then again go from b to a a to b and so on the sequence will keep going on and the only fresh trains that we require will be the initial four trains from a and the initial four trains from b okay and moving on to the last question this is pretty much the same as the previous question here we have what is the minimum number of trains that are required to provide the service in the city okay so on this route a to b we know there are eight trains required on the route a to b there are total eight trains similarly on this route c to d there will be eight trains required right now let's look at uh, route mn and route pq fine what is the time taken to go from m to n let's check that we had actually calculate the the time taken in the first question to go from m to n it was 61 minutes right so the first train that leaves at a m leaves at 6 am and reaches n at 641 right and it will have to wait for 15 minutes sorry not 6 uh, 61 minutes right sorry so it reaches at 71 61 minutes is the total travel uh, total time to go from m to n so it reaches at 7 171 am and it will have to wait for 15 minutes that is till 716 when it can start back again right so till 716 am we will need fresh trains from n to start and move go towards m so we will need a train at 6 am and in east west direction there are trains every 10 minutes right so at 6 am we'll need a train at 6 10 we'll need a train at 6:20 6:30 6:40 6:50 7 then you'll need a train at 7:10 and at 7:20 this train again can go towards m so how many fresh fresh trains do we need or new trains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight trains to go from n to m 
similarly you will need 8 trains to go from M to N also just like what we did in the previous question so on MN route you need a total of 16 fresh trains 8 from N to M and 8 from M to N similarly you will need 16 fresh trains on this route PQ so the total trains that we require is 8 plus 8 is 8 plus 8 16 16 plus 16 is 32 32 plus 16 is 48 so we will need total 48 trains to provide the metro service in this city right so that's it for this set thank you